if you're learning foraging or you just enjoy being able to identify plants when you're out walking then it's quite handy to know some leaf terminology to help you with the identification. So let's begin with the structure of a leaf. The first thing I look at is if a leaf is simple or compound. So if a leaf blade is one single piece like this sycamore leaf then it's a simple leaf. If a leaf is divided into several smaller leaflets, then it's known as a compound leaf, like this ash leaf here. All of this, from where it attaches to the stem, is one leaf. Compound leaves can be pinnately compound, like ash, where you've got the leaflets growing along a central stem. Or they can be palmately compound, like this horse chestnut, where the leaflets spread out from a central point like fingers from the palm of a hand. They can also be trifoliate or ternate, which means a compound leaf split into three leaflets like this clover. Next, let's take a look at the position of leaves along the stem. So if the leaves grow on one side of the stem, and then the other, they have an alternate arrangement. And here's a great example of that with this witch elm. If there are two leaves grown at the same point from either side of a stem, then that's an opposite arrangement. If you have three or more leaves growing in a ring around the stem, then that's a world arrangement, like with these cleavers. And the point on the stem where the leaves emerge is called the node, and the stem between the nodes is called the internode. If we look at a leaf blade, the top part is called the tip or the apex and that can be rounded or it can be pointed. The leaf tip can even be indented like this older. The lower section of the leaf is the base and if you have two rounded lobes like that that look roughly heart shaped then that is a chordate base. If there are two longer lobes so that the leaf is shaped like an arrowhead it's known as a sagittate base like this lords and ladies or cuneate if the leaf base is tapering like this. They can also have an asymmetrical base like this linden. The stalk that attaches the leaf to the main stem is known as a petiole. Here you can see that the petioles of this sycamore are bright red and that can be a useful ID feature of the sycamore tree. If a leaf doesn't have a petiole and instead it just attaches directly to the stem then it's known as sessile.
The main central vein is known as the midrib, and usually the other veins will go from that to the edge of the leaf. Sometimes with plants like nettles, they're net veined, so the veins just go off in all different directions. The veins can be parallel, like this wild garlic, Going back to pinnately compound leaves, the stem that the leaflets grow from, similar to a midrib in other leaves, but on a pinnately compound leaf, it's called a rachis. And as you can see here, we've got a red rachis on this meadow sweet leaf. And on pinnately compound leaves, the leaflets growing along the side are lateral leaflets, and if there's one growing at the tip, that's a terminal leaflet. Now let's take a look at the edge of the leaf, also known as the margin. It's a very important feature for identifying a leaf. So if the margin is straight and smooth, like this wild garlic, then it's an entire margin. The margins can be toothed or serrated, like these stinging nettles. If there's rounded teeth, like a scallop shell, it's known as a crenate margin. Spiky leaves, like holly, have a spinose margin. A ciliate margin means the leaf has really fine hairs running along its length, such as young beech leaves. Leaf margins can also be lobed. They can be more rounded lobed, like this common hogweed, or sharply lobed, like this giant hogweed. Leaves that have lobes running along their length are pinnately lobed. Leaves that are palmately lobed have their lobes spreading out from a central point. Leaves can have many different shapes. They can be oval. Lanceolate leaves are long and thin and pointed and they're at least three times as long as they are wide. Leaves that are long and straight with parallel sides, like this sedge or rosemary or bluebell, they're known as linear leaves. Deltoid leaves are roughly triangular in shape, like these silver birch. So here's just a quick run through of the features I'd look at for a sycamore leaf. First of all, it's a simple leaf because it's one piece. It has a lobed and toothed margin and it's palmately lobed because the lobes radiate out from one point. It grows in 
opposing pairs because there's two leaves coming out from the same point on opposite sides of the stem and the petioles are long and tinged red. Hopefully that will help you with identification on your walks. I haven't been filming much recently because I've been working on a foraging guidebook which is very nearly finished now. Hopefully that'll be ready by the end of July. Okay, thanks for watching.